Hey everybody and welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields and I'm going to show you how to make a starter using someone else's yeast by harvesting yeast out of bottles from a commercial brewery. So um, a lot of people as they get started brewing make starters uh, out of their yeast that they get from their normal homebrew supply store. So you'll get a liquid yeast and you'll have a really big beer and it will require you to have a lot more cells, viable cells, uh, to actually ferment that beer properly. And so this isn't going to be necessarily a tutorial on how to make a starter, but this is going to show you how to um, harvest or culture yeast from bottles from a commercial brewery. So there are some breweries um, such as Bell's and Sierra Nevada that don't filter their beers, which means some of the yeast sediment stays on the bottom of their bottles. So today, uh, I'm gonna be showing you how to harvest some of that yeast from Bell's uh, Oberon uh, American Wheat Ale. And so what I've done is I've made sure that this was refrigerated and set still for a period of time in my refrigerator. And that allows the yeast at the bottom uh, that's suspended in the beer to settle out at the bottom of the bottles. They also, you can also do this in cans because they don't filter any of them. So if you have like a Bell's Two Hearted Ale or a, uh, uh, the Bell's Official, which is their hazy IPA, um, you can also do it with that. But um, in this case, I like to show it with bottles just because you can see through the bottles for this demonstration. And bottles are easier as you do this for the first time to also see the yeast cake. So I'm gonna kind of show you what that looks like um, by carefully removing a couple of bottles from here. Um, as you can kind of tell, and it's probably hard to tell in here, so I'll, I'll try and use a flashlight to show you what it looks like. It's, it's a little warm in my garage too, so it also has some, uh, um, some condensation on the bottom of the bottle. But there's a little bit of a yeast cake that's down here towards the bottom, and it's kind of hard to tell through here, but if you can see the light, it's a little clearer up here, and then as you get to the bottom, there's a little tiny, little tiny layer of yeast that's on the bottom. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to um, pour the beer out without disturbing that yeast cake so we can get a little bit of yeast on the bottom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save that yeast in a little sanitized mason jar. And so this is a smaller um, you know, ball mason jar. I've already sanitized this, cleaned it uh, with uh, PBW and then uh, soaked it in some sanitizer that I have over here. And then I'm gonna create a starter and for purposes of being really quick and uh, I'm gonna use a fast pitch starter. There's also proper starters instead of actually using um, DME, which you can do to make a regular uh, wart starter uh, another way, but that's for a different video. And there's a lot of videos online showing you how to make a starter um, and a one liter starter you would use in a flask like this. We're gonna start this out small because we have such a small amount of yeast. We're gonna put a few bottles of that in to um, this mason jar, start that, and then in a couple of days, we're gonna make a one liter starter out of this. And then by the time we're ready to pitch in about, you know, about a week or so, um, six days probably at the minimum, uh, we will have ramped this up to a liter starter and then have it fully ferment out and then be able to cold crash it so all that yeast settles down to the bottom um, so we can decant off some of the uh, unneeded beer and then we can pitch it in our next, um, next uh, beer brew that we do. So I'm actually after this going to be uh, showing you guys how to actually brew the Oberon American Wheat Ale from Bell's um, uh, tutorial start to finish uh, using the same yeast that I'm doing in this video. So to start what we're going to do is we're going to sanitize the cap of this uh, bottle right here. And so I just spray a little bit of sanitizer on there. I've already sanitized my little uh, bass uh, bottle opener. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna crack one of these open and remove the cap. And then very carefully, again, we're gonna just pour the beer off by leaving the sediment in the bottom of the bottle. So we're gonna pour that out really slowly. And like you do when you're doing your home brew, you'll be able to kind of tell when some of the sediment starts to creep off the bottom. And so I'm gonna leave specifically, I'm gonna leave about, and it's probably hard to see again, but I'm gonna leave about that much. It seems like a lot. Um, you could probably leave a little less, but all it's gonna do is decant off that beer at the end when we start doing it. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna swirl that up 
and we're gonna release the yeast off the bottom of that bottle. And then we're gonna go ahead and pour this in our sanitized mason jar. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can kind of tell that after we do that and we get all that yeast out of there, that this looks a lot different than that because it's a little lighter colored. It's got that yeast cake uh, mixed in with some of the beer. To do a yeast starter, you need more than one beer. So the good news is you don't have to buy a yeast packet from your homebrew supply store or a, a liquid or a, or a dry yeast. Um, and you also get to enjoy a couple of beers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably start with about three of these um, and put three of the yeast cakes in the bottom of here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, use uh, this fast pitch. Now I'm not gonna create a full liter starter like it wants you to do on the can. So in order to do it this way, and you can also do it by making your own amount of wort, is I'm gonna add a, a fourth of cup of this and a fourth of cup of spring water or filtered water. You can use one, I just have a bottle of spring water here. Um, and that together will make a half a cup of even wort. So normally when you would do a, a liter starter, you would put a, a full can of this in and then fill this can up with a liter, excuse me, uh, uh, with spring water or tap water, uh, or excuse me, filtered water. And then um, this can would make a liter with your, um, with your sanitize, or excuse me, with your, uh, this, it would make a liter of your um, starter. And so with, with, your, uh, with your yeast in it. And so what I'm gonna do is take this fast pitch, I'm gonna pour a fourth a cup of this, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And you do wanna shake this up, I already did it a little bit and I already did sanitize this. So it's important to also sanitize this so you're not introducing any bad bacteria. I also sanitize this, but I set it down on the table. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this just a quick spray off with my sanitizer. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a one fourth cup of this Pour this into my my uh, harvested yeast, and then I'm going to take a fourth cup of this, and that gives me essentially a half a cup of wort total. And so it just gives that a little bit of sugar to start the fermentation process. Um, and then I'm actually going to put this once I have a couple more. Uh, I'm going to actually decant off a few more uh, beers, and I'm going to be able to drink three beers tonight, which is a bonus. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my, on my stir plate. So if, if, uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, stir plate is, this has a little magnetic thing in there. It comes with a, a stir bar and you're gonna drop this bar after it's sanitized inside of your, of your uh, um, container, whether it's this or the larger flask. And then you're gonna put a sanitized piece of tin foil on the top and you're gonna let that spin at a slower motion, just enough to give it a little funnel um, and it will help um, uh, get the yeast going and it'll help ferment the sugars that are now in here and create more yeast. With the remaining amount of fast pitch that you have, since we only used one fourth of the cup, you're gonna have almost a full can of this. And so you can actually use this when we ramp up to the one liter starter. And so what I do um, is I take a little bit of plastic wrap And I'm going to spray that with sanitizer because now it's open and you don't want this to get any bacteria and stuff in it. Spray that with a little bit of sanitizer. And then what I do is put this right over the top of the beer can or the fast pitch can. It's not quite beer yet. It's wort. And then put a rubber band around it. And then I'm actually going to put this in the refrigerator um, and I'll warm it up a little bit so it doesn't go in uh, cold. But since I'm going to let it sit out for two days, I don't want it to get any nasties in it. And so um, this will keep it from getting any bacteria and stuff while I put it in the fridge. So as you can see, we have our three yeast harvested bottles along with a little bit of wort on the stir plate. It's gonna sit here and multiply the yeast cells for a couple of days. And we're gonna come back and check it out after that and then up it to a liter size starter um, so we're able to then get it ready for pitching into our next batch of beer. All right, guys, we are back. 
It's been a couple of days since we did our starter. Um, it's had time to ferment out the little bit of wort that we added. Um, I shut the, a uh, good way to tell that your starter is done, at least at this stage and you're ready to move forward or at a larger size once it gets done, is when you shut the stir plate off <clears throat> and you've let it uh, sit for a little while, in this case, it's been about a half an hour or so, you can actually start seeing the, uh, there's a thin layer of your yeast cake on the bottom and then the beer starts separating out. So you'll see like kind of three different layers. You can kind of see a darker layer right about here. There's the middle layer that's still kind of settling. And then on the very bottom, you'll see a, a real small layer of the yeast cake going on. So um, that is finished up. We're gonna ramp this thing up into our flask size. I've just sanitized that. There's some extra sanitizer bubbles. Don't worry about that in there. Uh, but that's all clean and sanitized and we're gonna get ready to um, get a larger size in this flask um, to also get ramped up for a couple of days. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the lid off of this thing and we gotta get the stir bar that's in here that's been stirring this a little bit. Uh, uh, easy way to do that so you don't dump the whole thing in there and you can crack glass doing that with those metal stir bars is just take a magnet and you'll take that on the bottom and then that uh, stir bar will actually just come right up along with it. So you can see that thing, it's sticking to the side. Then you can set it down. You can actually slide this thing up with a finger then up to the top. And then I'm gonna put this right in sanitizer so it's ready for the next time to go. So we've got that out. We actually wanna stir this up a little bit now. So we wanna get that yeast back in suspension so it's not stuck to the bottom of the glass. So give that just a good little shake. Um, you don't have to stop the, if you had this thing, uh, the stir bar going, that would be enough. You don't need to have it stopped and let it settle for any reason. Um, this is, that'd be enough. You can just let it go. I did that just for the purposes to show you that um, the fermentation at this stage was done. <clears throat> so we're gonna start ramping it up to the bigger size. So before we had put um, the fast pitch can, in this case, uh, or if you had proper starter, or you can make, again, a full liter size of wort using DME, uh, dry malt extract um, and water um, in a traditional way. In this case, we're just doing it the fast way uh, with a proper starter, um, which is the can of wort. So before we put this uh, sanitized uh, film on the top, just to make sure that no nasties got in there, and we're gonna kind of give this a little bit of a swirl. It's almost a full can, because again, we only remember we only used a fourth of a cup in the first uh, little batch here. So it's almost a full can and you don't have to worry about it getting oxygen or anything. We're not keeping this beer. We're li literally just using it to multiply our yeast. So if it gets oxygenated, it's not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is um, pour this guy right in into the flask. And so the fast pitch or the proper starters, if you use those, they got some yeast nutrients right in it. Um, sometimes if I just do a regular starter, I will put a little bit of yeast nutrient in it. That's not required. It just kind of helps it uh, multiply a little bit faster. Then what we're going to do is fill this almost all the way. I remember we poured a little bit out for our uh, first time, but I'm going to almost fill this all the way up then with, uh, with the spring water that I used last time. We did a fourth a cup of each. In this case, we're going to try to do equal amounts of the spring water and the the wort. So I'm not going to fill it all the way up. But this will also help kind of get all the stuff that might be left over in the can out of there too so it mixes even. So we're going to fill it almost all up to the top. Kind of hard to tell as we get up there and if I need to pour a little bit out of can. Yeah, that's pretty close to where I need to be. And then we're going to take that, just give it a little bit of swirl to get any leftovers that might be on the bottom of this can. Since there's, like I said, an yeast nutrient and this settles a little bit too, pour that guy also right into the flask. So now that has created the wort and the right consistency that we needed and the right volume that we needed um, to, to, to ramp this up. So the next step then, this is again sanitized, we're just going to take our mixture that we have, make sure again it's good and swirled. So we loosen up the yeast that might have settled on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and just dump this guy right in as well. Uh, 
All right. And then last but not least, we've got to put the stir bar back in here, get it swirling, and then cap it again with some tin foil. So I'm gonna go ahead. One thing you can do the same way that we put this thing in or took this out with a magnet so you don't drop it in and break the flask. You can either tilt the, the flask or you can use a magnet, stick it to the side after it comes out of your sanitizer and just carry it all the way down to the bottom. Again there, that'll help it so that metal stir bar doesn't break the glass. And then you just put this guy right back on your stir plate and get that thing stirring. You see that start going there. And turn that down just a little bit. Again, you don't need a big swirl. It just needs to be moving around. A little bit of indentation in the middle there. It doesn't need to be a, a huge swirl or a huge, uh, you know, but sometimes it comes off. So you gotta make sure you get that back on there. If it's not centered perfectly, we'll stop it. And there's a magnet on the inside of that, so just make sure that the thing gets right back in the middle of the stir plate, and then we'll start back over. If it ever does that, it'll usually get right back on it. There we go. Right away. So anyway, we'll get that going. We'll get that thing moving along. And then um, what I'm going to do is take a, another piece of tin foil again and just spray the inside of this thing with some sanitizer and then put it on the cap. And again, just like we did the first time, I'm gonna leave this for about two days, and then I'm actually gonna take this whole container, don't have to do anything else after this, and I'm gonna put it in a refrigerator, and I'm gonna let it crash down, so that's gonna really help the yeast settle down to the bottom of the flask. And then once we get to that point, I will uh, show you again what we do uh, during the pitching portion of it uh, to uh, decant off the, the beer that we're not going to need off the top of this. Really what we want is just the yeast cake and a little tiny bit of beer to mix that up, get it off the bottom and be able to pitch it into our next, uh, next beer. But I'll show you guys what it looks like at the very end after we've crashed it um, and then uh, what you're going to come out with and how much yeast cake you should really have on the bottom. But until then, we'll let this sit for a couple of days. All right, guys, it's been three days since we uh, increased our starter to a liter size. In the first two days, it got done fermenting, and you saw um, that when we first started, it was a darker color, and as the yeast started, it added some foam cap on the top, and then it actually got a little bit lighter by the time fermentation is done. You'll sometimes see a lot of foam, or maybe not a lot of foam at all, maybe it just changes in, in color. It should be a little lighter by the time you get done, but that's kind of how you know you should see some active fermentation activity at least going. But one thing to know is when I get all done, and it goes about two days later, I put it in the refrigerator to crash for two days, or about, about 24 hours or so, or a little bit over, to make sure that the yeast settles all the way down to the bottom. And we're at that stage now, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So this is our uh, liter size, and at the bottom you can see there is a yeast cake, a layer of yeast on the bottom of this. That's all active yeast cells that we're gonna use uh, to pitch in our next beer. But all of the stuff on the top is uh, beer that we need to decant off the top of it, because we don't need that beer going into our next batch. That's just beer that was used to help replicate and uh, get more active, viable yeast into our next pitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna pour this gently uh, out so we are left with just a little bit of liquid, just enough to stir around that yeast cake uh, so we can pitch it in our next beer. All right, so I'm gonna decant off the remaining liquid here. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get all done. As I'm pouring this out, I'm being very careful not to disturb that yeast cake at all at the bottom. And as I pour it out, if I see a lot of the yeast start going towards the mouth, I'm just gonna stop. Um, this beer, you don't want it going in there. It's all oxidized beer, but you want as much yeast as possible to get in there. So I'm gonna leave about this much of the beer in there, and then I'm gonna swirl it around and I'm gonna get that yeast cake. See how it's still stuck all over the bottom here? I'm gonna get that off the bottom. So at this point, you can shake it around. We're gonna leave all that in there. We've decanted off as much as we need to. And then we're gonna let it sit out because I'm actually brewing today. And that is actually gonna be on the next video for how to do an all grain brewing batch, um, where we're gonna brew this 
American Wheat Ale from Bell's. Uh, they're over on American Wheat Ale. So stay tuned. We're going to let this sit out and warm up to about room temperature. <laughs> 